Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. For the last couple of weeks, I have taken my personal MacBook Pro. This is my daily driver laptop, and I've turned it into a Windows PC, which those of you that are familiar with Mac OS, you know that that's been possible for quite some time through boot camp. The unique part of this though, is it is running only Windows 10. There is no Mac operating system whatsoever on this laptop. So I wanna to talk today a little bit about my experiences over the last couple of weeks with Windows 10 as my daily driver on a MacBook Pro and whether or not I'm gonna be sticking with it or reverting back to Mac OS. So before I get into talking about the pros and cons of doing this particular operation with a MacBook Pro or other Apple laptop, I wanna talk through the process by which you get Windows only on this system, or at least the process that I recommend going through. So from my perspective, the easiest way to get Windows as the only operating system on the MacBook Pro or any other Mac is to go into the Boot Camp Assistant, which is actually in the Mac OS side of things, and go through the Windows installation process. And the reason for that is if you don't do that process through the Boot Camp Assistant, you have to go out and find the Windows drivers yourself and get them installed onto the Mac by yourself. And that's a little bit problematic if you don't have a keyboard and mouse laying around, because if you go that route, at least with this particular model, and I have a 2017 MacBook Pro here, uh, it won't recognize the keyboard or the mouse or rather the trackpad whatsoever once you're in Windows. So you can't use the actual input methods on the laptop unless you have those drivers. Whereas if you go through the Boot Camp Assistant, you should be good to go in that regard. So then once Windows is actually installed and you're up and running on the Windows side, grab a partition tool. And I like to use mini partition tool because it's just super easy to work with. And through that partition tool, I was able to delete the Mac OS partitions and everything associated with Mac OS. So now when I hit my power button, it just boots straight into Windows. Now, it does take a little bit longer to boot into Windows than some other laptops, though we're still talking about 20 to 30 seconds from a cold boot to get into Windows and up and running, and I do have the full SSD available for use. Now, the trials were not over quite yet, even once I had the base level Apple drivers installed, because there was a couple of quality of life things that I had to improve. One of those is the trackpad itself was extremely sensitive, so I actually went into the Windows mouse options to sort of figure out exactly the sensitivity with the trackpad itself and everything in there, as well as the boot camp options to select things like the tap to click functionality or two finger tap to get a right click functionality, that sort of thing. Then I had to turn to third parties to get the rest of the functionality that I needed, including things like uh, pinch to zoom and that sort of thing I found on a GitHub driver that enabled all of that on this trackpad because before that, and before I got that GitHub driver, if I was dragging with one finger, I could not continue to drag with a second finger. It would actually right click if I put a second finger on the trackpad while I was already dragging, which is super annoying because in Mac OS, if you start dragging and then take your other finger and drag around, ideally it allows you to continue to drag even though you're holding the button down with the first finger that was on the trackpad. I know a little bit super confusing there, but basically the trackpad was operating very differently in Windows, so I went on the search for a better driver and I did find one on GitHub. The last quality of life improvement that I went through actually has to do with shortcuts. And because I had been using Macs for so long and in my day job, I also use Macs, the command key for me on a MacBook is basically the control key. So in Mac OS, most of you know that are familiar with Mac OS, Command C is copy, just like Control C is copy in Windows. So I had been used to using the command buttons on this keyboard to actually basically replace the control button in Mac OS, but on Windows, the command button becomes the Windows key. So I went and found the third party registry editor, Sharp Keys, which is designed to actually let you edit keyboard keys and make them do different things. So my command key is now a control key in Windows and my control key as mapped on the actual Apple keyboard is now the Windows key because I use Windows far less, that key far less than I do the control key. So it makes more sense for me to keep that functionality on the same key that it was in Mac OS, mostly because it doesn't force me to actually learn the new key press and change how I've been operating the keyboard. I basically just transition straight over to Windows and pretend the Windows key almost isn't there unless I absolutely need to use it, in which case I hit the control key. Confusing again, I know, but it does make the quality of life with using this keyboard much better, especially when I'm doing things like copy paste or cutting things. So now that all that is out of the way and all those edits have been made, 
I can say confidently this is a very good Windows PC beyond having to go out and find some of those third party sort of software pieces that let you piece together a very competent machine. But once you have everything fine tuned to your liking, and once you've spent time with making sure all the sensitivity feels right and everything else, what we're left with is a Windows PC with a really nice keyboard, at least in my opinion. I know a lot of people don't like these MacBook Pro keyboards. I in fact do, of course, they're not very reliable, so that part is still a Debbie Downer. But for actually using the keyboard, I actually very much enjoy these butterfly switches, just not the reliability issues, which fortunately I haven't run into. But more of an important thing is the trackpad on MacBook Pros is probably the best one out there as far as laptops go. I know that Windows PCs have gotten much better trackpads in recent years. But for my money and ones that I've just played around with in general, I still believe the MacBooks and MacBook Pros offer the best trackpads on the market and allowing me to take that over to a Windows setting is just awesome. Now, of course, a lot of you may be asking why I would want to do this and it's really simple. I just didn't want to buy a new laptop. Now, I absolutely could have went out and got something like a Dell XPS 13, which I love the looks of those laptops, and I would love to try one of those out, or I could save up some more money and actually get a gaming laptop, though I'd want to keep a similar form factor. So something like a Razer Stealth is very appealing to me, but I didn't want to spend the money, and this is the easiest way and the most cost-effective way for me to get the Windows experience that I'm looking for, because frankly, none of the apps that I use are Mac OS only, Everything I use can be done on Windows, and in fact, I am far more comfortable in the Windows environment just because of what I do in my spare time. As a little bit of a techie nerd, you know, I build PCs all the time. I'm constantly in the Windows operating system. I'm just more comfortable there. So bringing Windows over to my MacBook Pro was the easiest and most cost-effective solution. So here's my recommendations if you're thinking about doing a similar maneuver. If you have an SSD that has plenty of space on it, or maybe you just don't use hardly any space because you basically run from a web browser, then it may be more beneficial to actually dual boot Windows and Mac OS and then just pick which one you want to boot into. But if you're looking for a one OS experience and you're more comfortable with Windows, but you like the hardware on the Mac side of things, you can in fact get everything up and running just fine and still get yourself a fantastic Windows 10 experience while having the fantastic hardware that Apple frankly does make. Just understand, you can get a much cheaper Windows 10 experience with different laptops on the market. It just might not feel quite as good in the hand and definitely the hardware won't be quite as premium if you're trying to spend a significantly less amount of money. But of course, that's my experience, but I do wanna hear from you guys, especially those of you out there that do use Boot Camp. How do you feel about Windows 10 on your Macs, whether it be your desktop Macs or whether it be your laptop form factors like this MacBook Pro? Let me know your thoughts in those comments down below. And of course, if you like the video, hey, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful to the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.